Hey, everybody, Legal Vices here, bringing you up to date on a very important case that we've been covering since the beginning of the case, since the first time it came across my radar. That's the case of Virgilio Aguilar Mendez, the Guatemalan uh, immigrant who was beset upon by police officers. He'd attempted to come into the country illegally. He was taken into federal custody for several months, after which he was released to a distant relative pending the resolution of his uh, immigration status hearing, which I believe is scheduled for July of this year. While he was out legally walking the streets, while he was out legally among society, had every single right to be where he was doing what he was as any other citizen of the United States or a you know, permanent resident. He was legally authorized and able to be where he was doing what he does. So you know, he was illegal, so it doesn't matter. That, that argument, that's a no start. That's an absolute non-starter. Anyway, he's sitting out on a street corner in front of the hotel where he's staying on a balmy May evening, talking to his mother on the telephone, eating some dinner when a cop rolls up and starts giving him commands on him to stop. You know, what are you doing? Where are you going? Trying to frisk him. Uh, and the kid who doesn't speak English, he speaks a very, very obscure, rare Mayan dialect called mom that's spoken by about half a million people on planet Earth is all. He doesn't understand what's going on. He tries to tell the, the police, no, I don't speak English. I'm staying over there. Uh, you know, my family, I want my family. But uh, things the, the cops unnecessarily and what I consider to be illegally, because I, I believe it was a completely illegal Terry stop and an illegal Terry search. It was, it was escalated for no reason whatsoever. And it ends up with four cops dogpiling on this 18 year old kid, tasing him six times on the spot fine and eventually after about a six minute back and forth during which he was not aggressive he was just trying to trying to do what he could to stop being tased while people are screaming at him in a foreign language and go back to the playlists watch the uh, watch the the body cam footage we've i've gone through it two or three times watch it for yourself but about you know a few minutes after they get him handcuffed and put in the back of a squad car, the first officer on the scene drops dead. They immediately charge Aguilar Mendez with felony murder of a law enforcement officer. Well, that was later dropped down to aggravated manslaughter of a law enforcement officer. Uh, why was it dropped? Because the autopsy report came back and the conclusion was that the officer had died of natural causes. He was uh, 52 years old. He, ha he had untreated heart arrhythmia, untreated hardening of the arteries, untreated high blood pressure, and he was recovering from bronchitis. And all of these came together to uh, basically end his life at that point. So they dropped the charge down to aggravated manslaughter of a law enforcement officer and continued to prosecute him. But essentially what that means in a very, very rough nutshell is they would have to prove that the actions that he did, the actions that Aguilar Mendez did while he was trying not to be tased were actions that he knew or should have known would likely result in the death of the police officer, which is absolute garbage. That was an ab it's an absolute ridiculous thing to try to prove. But the prosecution went ahead with it. Eventually, he was found incompetent to stand trial, not for mental reasons, but for cognitive and linguistic reasons and cultural reasons. He didn't understand the language. He didn't understand the, the, the concept of the court process. He didn't understand the roles of the prosecution. And he was unable to assist in his own defense. So they put him into a program to try to educate him on what was going on and to, to make him competent to stand trial. But... Finally, someone in Florida got their head out of their ass and did the right thing, and all charges have been dropped. And uh, I want to look at an article from Fox News. Fox News recently did what was essentially a hit piece on Aguilar Mendez, uh, full of loaded language, full of incorrect statements. But now they, they seem, to have, uh, seem to have got an interesting page here. I want to read this article from, from Fox News. Defense attorney slams Florida sheriff after charges dismissed for illegal migrant accused in deputy death. Aguilar Mendez lawyers claim his limited ability to speak or understand English and Spanish constituted a disability. That was that was the uh, the, the headline of the other article I was talking about, the, the this loaded language article. Let's get down here. The high-profile lawyer for an illegal migrant from Guatemala slammed Florida police after his client's charges were dismissed in the manslaughter of a police deputy. Virgilio Aguilar Mendez, 19, he just turned 19 uh, uh, 
a month or so ago, was charged with aggravated manslaughter of an officer after a scuffle involving several law enforcement officers in May 2023 left Sergeant Michael Kunovich of the St. John's County Sheriff's Office dead. On Friday, Aguilar Mendez's charges were dropped, but the teen remains in federal custody in Florida and faces deportation. That was part of the deal. Uh, now, now that uh, he was charged, if the charges were dropped or if he was found not guilty or whatever, he wouldn't just be released back into the population. He would go right back into the federal uh, the federal custody for the immigration charge. So he's going to remain in the uh, in the Florida federal immigration detention center, whatever they want to call it, until the immigration status is resolved. And again, I believe the hearing is scheduled for July in that. Recent expert testimony regarding the defendant's inability to comprehend the English language, his cultural background, and concerns about his intellectual capacity have raised significant issues to consider in the case, the 7th District State Attorney's Office said in a statement. Furthermore, Based on the court's recent ruling, the defendant is incompetent to proceed. Based on that expert testimony, dismissal of the charges is appropriate. Arrest and time served is sufficient. I don't like the way that's worded. I don't, I don't like that quote at all. Arrest and time served is sufficient for what? He was doing nothing wrong when he was arrested. When, when the cop talked to him, there was no grounds for that arrest. That was an absolute illegal arrest, in my opinion. Time served is sufficient. He should never have served any time. He should never have been detained in the first place. So it's not sufficient. And I hope to God there's a civil lawsuit that comes back to bite these officers, the department in the ass, because they frankly deserve it for this one. Following the ruling, Aguilar Mendez's attorney, Jose Baez, blasted the St. John's County Sheriff's Office for creating a false narrative that the teen failed to follow instructions. Baez said that Aguilar Mendez primarily spoke mom, a Guatemalan language, and is not competent in English. He's not even competent in Spanish. Uh, you know, culture that starts and ends with the sheriff, who not only doubled down but tripled down by creating a false narrative that this young man who came in at 17 was someone who failed to follow instructions, Baez said in a press conference following Aguilar Mendez's dismissal. He says if he only followed instructions, Kunovich would still be alive. Baez said, I want to see, he I want one day see him comply to orders given to him in mom or Spanish, and I would guarantee you that he would not comply. Then claim Virgilio, Virgilio Aguilar Mendez was going to use a knife, knowing that was a lie. The dismissal comes nine months after Kunovic, 52, collapsed from medical distress during an encounter with Aguilar Mendez, who was 18 at the time. The officer later died. According to the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, Kunovich initially approached Aguilar Mendez about 9 p.m. on May 19th, suspecting him of a crime. Absolute bullshit. He didn't suspect him of a crime. There's nothing to indicate in any of the records that he suspected him of committing a crime. He was on a fishing expedition. He rolled up to him. The kid was just sitting there. And the first thing the officer said was stop and then started this whole escalation process. They, there was nothing in any report to indicate that the officer thought he had committed a crime, was committing a crime, or was about to commit a crime, which are the three elements you need in order to stop and question someone. That never happened. Aguilar Mendez was walking on a public sidewalk and speaking with his mother, which is not a crime, the lawsuit states. See, that's great. He needs that lawsuit. Get that lawsuit on. When Sergeant Kunovich seized Aguilar Mendez, he stopped and did not try to flee. Absolutely an accurate statement. The officers pursued Aguilar Mendez, who apologized in English, before continuing to resist the arrest. Did he really resist the arrest, or did he just try not to get tased in the spine six times? The migrant was allegedly confused. Allegedly confused. No, he was confused. Watch it. And told the deputy, I'm sorry, no speak, no speak English. Other deputies, including those who spoke Spanish, responded to the scene, which ultimately saw the officers tase the migrant, parentheses, six times in the spine and tackle him to the ground, Sheriff Robert Hardwick said at the time. The sheriff's office said the deputies attempted to restrain Aguilar Mendez, who they claim was resisting arrest. While fighting on the ground, the suspect attempted to grab Sergeant Kunovich's taser, absolutely 
purely completely refuted by the body cam footage where you can see him he's not trying to to grab it and snatch it away from him he's he's trying to push it away from him so they will stop tasing him with it for he doesn't know why for he resisted resisted violently yeah he did not violently resist you watch it he, at one point he somehow breaks free and he stands up and he just stands there he's not violently doing anything other than trying to stop the pain for approximately six minutes and 19 seconds, Hardwick said. The deputies then handcuffed the migrant, but he managed to acquire a small pocket knife. The, the office did not say if the migrant attempted to use the weapon. Oh, yeah, they did. They said he was trying to open it, and you know, it, 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 was, it was utter bullshit. Sergeant Kunovich collapsed moments after the subject was disarmed. No, it was a few minutes after they... And they didn't ah, disarm. We're not even going to go down there. It was several minutes after they handcuffed him and put him in the back of the car that Sergeant Kunovich collapsed. And relentless life-saving measures were initiated by St. John's County Fire Rescue and Flagler Health Plus personnel. He was ultimately pronounced deceased shortly after transport to Flagler Hospital. The statement continued. Baez claims that his client was confused and was unable to understand the brutality of the officers. The scuffle was recorded by the officers' body cams, and the lawyers point to the video as evidence of the migrant's inability to understand or speak English. Without question, Aguilar Mendez did not understand the purpose or reason for the officers to pile on him, to physically strike him multiple times, and the repeated use of a taser by Sergeant Kunovich, Baez said. That's uh, Jose Baez right there. A lawsuit from Baez claimed that Sergeant Jose Jimenez, another responding deputy, did not make Aguilar Mendez aware of his Miranda rights or attempt to obtain an interpreter for him. The deputies knew there was a substantial likelihood that Aguilar Mendez would be unable to communicate effectively, absent any interpretive aid for mom, and ignored Aguilar Mendez's statutory rights and SJCSO's policies regarding limited English proficiency, the lawsuit reads. Kunovich was a 25-year veteran of the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, and Sergeant Hart and Sheriff Hardwick described him as a valued member of the St. John's County Office who passionately dedicated his career to keeping our community safe. Not surprisingly, the St. John's Sheriff's Department uh, and Jose Baez were not immediately available for comment. That's the end of this article, but I'm glad and I'm happy and I'm satisfied that the charges against Virgilio Aguilar Mendez have been dropped. That brings this particular chapter of the story to a close. He still has his immigration status hearing coming up on July 12th. I mean, if if I was him, I don't even know that I'd I'd want to to fight to stay in in you know, the the land of dreams in America after after the stuff that he went through. Does he even want to stay here? Uh, but there's so there's the immigration proceedings, plus there's also the civil lawsuit. And I hope the state of Florida and the officers, you know, the, the sheriff's office and pol the, the police office, every, every office, whatever, who, whatever office and whoever was involved in that, I hope they paid dearly. But it's a it's a very, very good outcome that he's not facing you know, 30 years in prison for this. So congratulations to his defense team. And it's about time that someone pulled their head out of their backside and dropped those criminal charges against him. Stay tuned for more. If we get any new more updates on the civil proceedings or the outcome of his uh, immigration status hearing, we'll, we'll let you know. Stay here to Legal Vices and on your way out, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, everybody.